In the March issue of CardioSource World News, we have a cover story that takes a look at uh, antiplatelet therapy, specifically dual antiplatelet therapy. There are a variety of studies coming soon that may answer some of the really important questions raised by some clinical trials that we talk about on the cover story. But I'm talking specifically about DAPT and another study called Pegasus, and I'm with Dr. Laura Mori, who is the Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and the Chief Science Officer at HCRI, which is the Harvard Clinical Research Institute. Now, in the case of DAPT, tell me what the question is you're trying to answer. Sure. Um, well, as you probably know, there's been tremendous uh, variation worldwide in how long patients are treated with aspirin plus um, a medication like clopidogrel or other thionopyridines after coronary stents are placed because we don't really know uh, what the appropriate duration should be in terms of preventing late stent thrombosis or other cardiovascular events. Um, and so it's remained a, really a problematic question for cardiologists worldwide. Now the acronym DAPT stands for pretty much what you would expect the acronym for this trial to stand for. In terms of how many patients are you looking at and when uh, are we expecting some data and just tell me a little about the trial. Sure. So we enrolled 26,000 patients worldwide. Um, it was an incredible um, trial to run uh, together with my co-PI, Dean Kariakis, uh, because sites were so enthusiastic about participating in this. And wow. we really had very broad inclusion criteria. So there are patients who are quite complex in the trial, lots of patients with acute coronary syndromes and diabetes. A real um, world population. Really a real world population, that's right. Um, and it also represents a great variety of different types of approved stents. So um, the majority are everolimus saluting stents, but we have a, um, a whole range of four different approved stents that are included in the trial. Um, and also different types of thionopyridines, clopidogrel and prasugrel. Uh, so patients were enrolled, and then after the first year of follow-up, they were randomized if they were still eligible. So we have the observational period and then the randomization phase. So the primary analysis is really to compare one year versus longer dual antiplatelet therapy after coronary stents. Um, and we expect to have the results this year very soon um, because we're right now in the final phases of follow-up. So it should be here in the fall. I mean, one of the issues we address in the cover story is the fact that a lot of people are managing to stay on dual antiplatelet therapy for some time, but now the question is just how long is necessary? Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have some answers soon. Right. Um, we're really looking forward to it because it's not, it's almost not a day goes by that I get asked this question. It's a question that we face both as interventional cardiologists, but also general cardiologists and, and patients for right. long-term follow-up. Now, there's another study. Uh, yours is probably going to report out by the end of the year, correct? Yes. I think the Pegasus trial is looking to close by the end of the year, but they probably won't present until my guess is maybe early uh, 2015. In the case of Pegasus, what are they trying to do? Do you remember? Yes, yeah, so um, they're interested in one specific drug, Ticagrelor, um, and looking at patients who've had a myocardial infarction, um, not necessarily all treated with coronary stents, but any patient with a myocardial infarction over the past year, um, and randomizing patients to then um, start Ticagrelor versus uh, continue on placebo. As you might imagine, being associated with the ACC, we tend to recommend that people follow the guidelines. In terms of recommended therapy beyond the guidelines, until we know anything from uh, Pegasus or DAPT, any recommendations? Well, I think the guidelines stand um, as they are. Um, the guidelines would recommend for drug eluting stents one year of dual antiplatelet therapy. Um, and, and any patient with an acute coronary syndrome, even with bare metal stents. Within DAPT, we'll get a chance to um, have a much more strong comparison of bare metal and drug looting stents, as well as how long patients should be treated, depending on the stent type. So that'll be useful. So I think the, both of these trials will be really helpful to determine whether the guidelines should change uh, based on the results. But for now, our best um, recommendations are to continue to follow the guidelines. And at one year, I can imagine that there are a lot of clinicians who are going they're very successfully treated on this. They have not had a problem. Why not uh, continue on it? Right. And that's the issue that we're trying to solve. Exactly, exactly. And, and there, there are also patients, however, that have trouble continuing because of bleeding. So we're trying to weigh the risk and benefit uh, between preventing hard cardiovascular endpoints and stent thrombosis versus the risk of bleeding with the longer-term therapy. 
Well, the cover story is the March issue of Cardiosaurus World News, and there are some definite details that will be coming out towards the end of the year with DAP, and probably the end of the year or more likely the beginning of 2015 with Pegasus. For Cardiosaurus World News, I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.